In this Elden Ring video, I'm going to be showing you my Haima Hoplite build. This is an all game build that can actually be used from the very beginning of the game all the way through New Game and through New Game Plus. I'm going to be showing you footage of the New Game Plus version, but I will also be explaining how to use it in New Game. So first, let's take a look at the weapon we're using for this build. We're using the Clayman's Harpoon here. This is a weapon you can find relatively early in the game. If you take the Siopra River well down and then farm the Clayman down there, you can get this very early on. So this is a weapon you can use probably from the first 5% of the game onward, and you can actually farm two if you want, and I'll explain why you may want to do that here in a minute. Now what makes this weapon particularly interesting, as I showcased in my Frost Knight and Royal Frost Knight builds, is that this weapon does physical and magic damage, but you can still infuse it, and that's like not very common in this game at all. So this makes it a really unique weapon, and what I actually recommend doing with this weapon for this build is leaving it on the standard infusion. And the reason for that is by leaving it on standard, you're still going to get scaling out of strength and intelligence, allowing you to increase the physical and magic damage of it, and then still be able to buff it with something like Scholar's Armament. If you put it on the heavy infusion, you can still buff, but then you won't have intelligence scaling. So any points in intelligence then don't go to the damage of the weapon. They will go to the physical damage of the weapon. But I find that you only come out like 10 to 15 points behind heavy if you go this way, and you actually come out with more magic damage. And then you can buff on top of that, getting even more magic damage. And then when you make use of things like uh, Terra Magica or Magic Shred of Crack Tier, or if you want to use Magic Scorpion Charm, you're going to affect the weapon more because you'll have more magic damage. Now, when it comes to the Ash of War for this build, there are two that I actually like to use. And this is why I was mentioning earlier that if you have two of these spears, you can put them both in your right hand. You can put one Ash of War on one and one Ash of War on the other. It's obviously a little bit more difficult to do that early on in the game. But if you're talking about New Game Plus, it's a lot easier to do with a lot more upgrade materials. So let's take a look at the first Astral War I use here, and this is Repeating Thrust. And the reason I like Repeating Thrust on this build is because that that extra damage you get from Scholar's Armament is going to be applied to each hit. You hit four times with Repeating Thrust, each one of those hits is going to get that extra damage, and that makes Repeating Thrust deal a lot more damage than it would be if you were unbuffed. And then if you use something like Rotten Winged Sword Insignia, for instance, to further boost your damage when you hit repeatedly with that, you can crank your damage up very, very high over like a thousand attack power no problem if you're buffed with magic shrouded crack tier and you're standing in terra magica and you have this buff up you can hit over 1200 attack rating probably now the reason that i have another ash of war here instead of just this one and that ash of war is impaling thrust is because i find this is very situational with this build repeating thrust is very good in my opinion for like regular enemies and maybe hard to kill regular enemies in the landscape sometimes depending on the boss it can be rather hard to use in a boss fight it doesn't have a lot of stance damage, you don't stance break bosses very easily, even though you deal very good damage with it. So it's very situational, you can use whichever one you like. But what I really like about Impaling Thrust is it has very good reach, it goes through shields, which is kind of the weakness of spears, and it staggers just about anything in one hit, if it's not like a tough enemy or a boss. So you can kind of use like the Moon Veil strategy here, where, or a block counter strategy, where you know you do a block counter, you do a critical attack, you refund it with Assassin's Cerulean Dagger, um, or, you know, you can use Impaling Thrust, get a critical attack, replenish it with Assassin's Sterling Dagger. So it's very, you know, refundable that way for using the Assassin's Sterling Dagger. It also has very low cost at 9, and Repeating Thrust only costs 7. So these are both very cheap ones, and I like to use Impaling Thrust on bosses for the stance damage. This allows you to take them down very, very quickly, and then keep attacking them or get a critical strike on them. It's just really, really strong in boss fights, I find. And again, this is why I recommend maybe using two of these in this build, because then you can swap on the fly, you run into a guy with a shield, you use Impaling Thrust to take him down real quick, do a critical strike, and then maybe you swap to Repeating Thrust, take on something else, and you can just swap back and forth on the fly. And what's great too is that Impaling Thrust is found at the Warmaster Shack, so that's very early on in the game, you can just buy it there. And Repeating Thrust is found by defeating the First Knight's Cavalry there, like along the main road just below the Gatefront Ruin. So... Both of these uh, Ashes of War can be found very, very quickly in the game, and so can the weapon, so you can put this build together very quickly. When it comes to the shield, I'm using the Cuckoo Great Shield here just because I feel like it fits the style of my armor. I'm actually using three pieces of the Cuckoo Knight set with the Blythe's armor piece, so that's kind of the style I'm going for. But it kind of fits. You can use any Great Shield you want, and obviously the Beginning Knight, the Godric Knight there in the Gatefront runes, you can farm for his Great Shield, or you can use a Brass Shield early on, something like that. So if you're putting this game early on, you can get any great shield you want. This is just the one that I kind of like for the style, but if you don't want to use that, that's fine. And then when it comes to our staff here, we have the Academy Glintstone Staff, and that's just because it's the best staff you can use at basically 50 intelligence, or right around the 50 intelligence area, about 5 to 10 points either side of that. The Academy Glintstone Staff is going to give you the best sorcery scaling, which is going to make your Scholar's Armaments the strongest possible. So that's why we're using that, but if you're talking about like early on in the game what staff to use, 
probably wouldn't use that one because it only becomes better at about 40 or so intelligence. So I would recommend using like the meteorite staff early on, just heading over to Kaelin and getting that right over, get it if you want to put this build together early. So I mentioned the armor that I'm using already. I have three pieces of the Cuckoo set and Blythe's armor set. You can use whatever you want here. You can use a knight set. As long as you have 55 poise, that's basically what you're going for so that you're not interrupted when you're using repeating thrust or if you're using impaling thrust, you can hit once and then maybe hit again through another attack and then hit again in order to stagger like a boss really quickly. For talismans, we have Shard of Alexander. This is obviously going to affect either one of these Ashes of War, so it's good to have. And then we also have the Curved Sword Talisman. This increases your block counter damage. And we have the Spear Talisman, which increases the amount of counter damage you do to enemies. This is when you hit them with thrust damage while they're coming forward in their attack animation. That happens a lot with this build with both repeating thrust and impaling thrust because you're very aggressive. So you're going to get extra damage when you do that. And then if you're using the impaling thrust setup, I also like to put on the dagger talisman to give me increased uh, critical damage when you're doing a follow-up attack because that happens a lot when you're using impaling thrust, also when you're block countering, so that's really good. But I would swap that out for the Rotten Wing Sword Insignia if you're using Repeated Thrust in order to get your attack power boosted each time you use it. And obviously we talked about the Assassin's Trillian Dagger. I like this early on in the game when you don't have all these talismans, particularly like Shard of Alexander if you're not using Warrior Jar Shard. I like this earlier on in the game in order to help with your FP management since you're going to have to put points in Strength, Intelligence, Vigor, and Endurance. You're not going to have a lot of points for mine, so you're not going to you know, have a lot of FP. But I would sub it out later on in the game when you don't really have FP issues. Besides Scholar's Armaments, I also have Terra Magica slotted into this build, but you won't see too much footage of me using it because, frankly, this is a very aggressive build, and you're not usually sitting in your Terra Magica space waiting for a boss to come to you. You're going to them, you're on the offensive with Repeating Thrust or Impaling Thrust, but it's there sometimes because sometimes you can put it like outside a boss fog and walk in and a boss is really aggressive and you start fighting. Or maybe you put it down in the arena and you know you're going to have to roll away really quickly and you're going to land on it. But it's very, very situational. You won't use it all the time. Beyond this, you can use other sorceries if you want in order to give you like a ranged option in a pinch, which I recommend sometimes that can really help save you, even if you're not, you know, hitting at maximum damage compared to like a pure sorcerer type build. But it's good to have options. But you will notice with this spear that once you get over 50 intelligence, the scaling on it just drops off incredibly for intelligence. So you're really not going to take intelligence any higher than this. So when you get to New Game Plus, those spells are going to become even more and more less effective. So when it comes to attributes for this build, I have 60 Vigor, 25 Mind, 33 Endurance, 50 Strength, 12 Dexterity, 50 Intelligence, 7 Faith, and 9 Arcane. You don't really need any Faith or Arcane for this build, although I would say that probably by the end of New Game Plus, if you wanted to take it up to 25 in order to pick up Golden Vow, that would probably be a good pickup. Because after you hit about 80 Strength or so, you're really not going to get much more damage out of this weapon at this point. So it would probably be better after that to go a Faith route and pick up Golden Vow and Flame Grant Me Strength, even though half of your damage is magic. Those buffs could give you more damage in boss fights, so probably after you get to 80 Strength, you might consider increasing your Faith in order to do that. 60 Vigor is because we trade damage quite regularly with Repeating Thrust and Impaled Thrust, and this is a very tanky build. We also don't really need too much more in the way of attack power stats right now, so it's good to have. 25 Mind is probably too much for this point of the game. We don't use a lot of FP. Hailing Thrust is only 9, and Repeating Thrust is only 7. Those are not very high. And Scholar's Armament doesn't use a lot of FP either, and it has a very long-lasting buff. So you don't go through a lot of FP, and you can use your flasks. You know, I don't even use all my flasks between checkpoints that I have set. So you could probably drop this down to 20 early on. And early on in the game, if you only have like 15 or so, that's fine as you're putting this build together, because you're going to prioritize strength, intelligence, and endurance and vigor, obviously. When it comes to endurance, I have 33, and that's the exact number I need in order to medium roll here. If you are using another spear, for instance, if you're going to you know, do the swap spears, you're going to have more equip weight. You'll need to bump this up probably three or four points at least. And if you're using a different shield, it might weigh more or less, so you might have to increase or decrease your endurance a little bit, but it's going to be somewhere in this ballpark. Strength and intelligence are both at 50 here. This weapon scales much better with strength than it does with intelligence. So early on, I would say prioritize strength. Um, particularly to meet the requirements for a great shield and such. Um, but at some point after you maybe you get to 50 strength, you want to start increasing your intelligence, and that's going to give you extra magic damage on your weapon, and that's going to increase the damage you get from the sorcery scaling on your Scholar's Armaments. So that'll make Scholar's Armaments stronger and stronger, but you should probably start off with strength early on and then focus on intelligence later. You really don't need any dexterity for this build. That's just the number I started with this build. I believe it has 10 requirement on the spear, so you don't really hardly need any dexterity as long as you have 10. 
When it comes to the Flask of Wondrous Physique, I like to use the Magic Shredding Cracks here. We do over 50% magic damage when we're fully buffed, so we get good use out of this. This is going to increase your damage by like 100, 150 attack power, something like that in New Game Plus. So that's really good, and that's a good one to use early on in the game. You could use Intelligence or Strength if you want, but once you get that one, use that one. And other ones you can use are the one that increases your Poise Damage or Stance Damage. This helps make Impaling Thrust more viable, like in boss fights. It doesn't last very long, but it'll allow you to stagger bosses more easily. So if you're using Impaling Thrust during a boss fight, take this one. If not, use the one that increases your damage with Repeated Strikes so that your Repeating Thrust deal even more damage in boss fights. And when it comes to Great Ruins, Godric's is not a bad choice. You need Vigor of Mind, Endurance, Strength, Intelligence, and a little bit of Dexterity. And again, if you're going to do the Faith thing later on to boost your attack power through like Golden Vow, it's not bad to have. So Godric's is not a bad choice. You get about 5 out of the 8 stats that you really need out of it. Another good choice would be Radon's in order to get more health, more stamina, more FP. All these things are good for this build. So I'd recommend one of those two. So that wraps up my Heimla Hoplite build. I hope you guys found it enjoyable. This is a really fun build to play. Very high damage. Hailing Thrust is a ton of fun. Repeating Thrust is a ton of fun with this. I like the style of it. Block counters work very effectively in this build. It's very mana efficient. Everything about it is just very, very fun to play. And it's very, very stylish, obviously. That's what I really love about it. So let me know what you guys think in the comments below. If there are other builds you guys want to see or other weapon videos, let me know. 